The NASCAR Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Driver, start your in and pull those belts up tight as the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presents the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. I'll wreck my mom to win a championship. I'll wreck your mom to win a championship. With all the news and the best bets for your NASCAR weekend. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions. But since I'm on probation, I suppose that that's uh, improper to say as well. If you could talk about racing things, we could talk about racing things. Now, here are your hosts, Rod Gomez and Cody Zeeb. Welcome into the IndyCar Gambling Podcast here on the... What? What? No, <laughs> it, it's a special episode of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. It is, of course, the Indianapolis 500, so... We figured we'd give you a bonus episode and give you some Indy 500 racing picks because that's what we do here. We're, we're for the people, Cody. We, we love you guys enough to give you more picks to bet on this weekend. I love it, Rod. The IndyCar Gambling Podcast has a nice ring to it. Who knows what the future may hold? You never know. But, uh, man, IndyCar, Indy 500 week. Get to talk some IndyCar. This is super exciting. I love IndyCar. I love racing in general. Obviously, this is the greatest spectacle in racing for a reason. We're in for a, a really good weekend. And full disclosure, just so everybody knows out there, I do not follow IndyCar uh, because, obviously, between racing, between my absolute passion for football and my want to have a life, uh, I've stopped. I had to let something go, and unfortunately, IndyCar is it. So I did my research for this episode, so don't think that I didn't obviously, but I don't know the day-to-days. Cody is going to carry me through this because he is the one that's been paying attention this season and uh, and actually writing about it. So, you know, good on Cody. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. I- I'm not as well-versed in IndyCar as I am in NASCAR, of course, but I do follow IndyCar, watch every week, try to keep up with all the storylines. Um, and yeah, I, man, IndyCar racing is it- so underrated. I don't think people realize we like F1 as well. We do the F1 game like podcast, but we know F1 can be more of a show, more of the pomp and circumstance. And IndyCar is like legit true racing. There's been quite a few different winners this year. Um, some new names jumping into victory lane, guys like Kyle Kirkwood. Like it has been, and the racing has been amazing. Been to one oval race so far this year, Texas, potentially one of the best races I've ever seen in my life. It had literally everything during the entire race. I was glued to my seat. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been an amazing IndyCar season so far. I, I love all the buildup for the Indianapolis 500. Like, they've had eight practices already for this, all the qualification rounds. They spend like a month at this track preparing for this race, getting ready to go. Now it's almost here. I think there's one more final practice coming up this week, but it's just about here. We've got all the lines out nice and early too. recording this on a Tuesday evening. Uh, nice and early with the lines. Love to see that. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm so pumped up for this rod. Going to be a good one. Uh, I think, think we're in for a good, a good weekend. Yeah. Just like you said, I mean, they have spent all basically year at this track getting ready for the next one. Uh, the qualification is already set and, uh, man, I'm telling you right now, three guys on the front row, uh, that's, that's something to NASCAR fans aren't necessarily used to for this, uh, the yeah. rows. Yeah, and three. if you are, if you are, you know, from the NASCAR gambling podcast or the F1 gambling podcast, we'll have this on, on both feeds. But, uh, if, if you're not used to IndyCar or new to IndyCar, they do start three wide. So it is 11 rows of three for 33 cars to fill this field. Um, so that is pretty exciting. It's, it's it's nonstop action from the drop of the green flag. These cars are going so fast. Um, we had a, a record um, four lap pace in qualifying that was set 
broke last year's record as well. But uh, yeah, so Alex Pillow will start on the pole, 234.217 mile per hour average. That's his average, Rod. Over four laps, he sustained that type of speed. Absolutely incredible. These guys are insane, and I love every second of it. Um, he is in one of the Chip Ganassi Hondas. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about the the difference in Honda, Chevrolet, Ganassi, Penske, obviously the big teams here, but uh, it's one of those races that everybody shows up looking to win, and a lot of different guys have a good chance at this one. Well, okay, so just just to clarify that too, the poll time, right? The total time in this was uh, two thirty three seven zero three seven. The second place driver total time two thirty three seven zero seven seven, and he was actually faster in his average speed. He had two thirty four point two one one. That was Renus VK. Man, yeah. unbelievable how fast these guys go, and and not even that, but like, uh, it's just insane. Yeah, um, and then there was a crash in one of the practices this weekend. Uh, Catherine Legge and Stefan Wilson um, got involved in a wreck. Uh, she's been treated, released from the infield care center. Uh, Wilson was taken to the hospital and has been checked out. Um, he appears to be okay, but uh, I think he had a vertebrae fracture or something and is going to miss the race. Um, there was 34 drivers that attempted to make the race. Only 33 get into the race. Graham Rahal was the lone non-qualifier. It worked out nicely. Unfortunately for Wilson, obviously not able to do the race. Uh, and our thoughts to him. And, and luckily, it seems like he's okay. Just has some recovering to do. But worked out. They were able to work a deal. Graham Rahal will take over his ride for the Indy 500. So um, the able to drive of the 34 that entered um, will all be in this race. Sounds outstanding well then let's set up this race we'll take a break we'll come back we'll set it up and we'll start giving you some of our picks which is why you're here in the first place to figure out how to bet on this monster that is the indianapolis 500 but let's take a second to tell you about edge boost have you signed up for edge boost if not you are missing out edge boost is the world's first bet now pay later visa card similar to buy now pay later programs edge boosts enables you to double your bet with no interest and pay back the advance over four equal weekly installments that's right zero percent interest simply deposit funds into your account edge boost is going to match the deposit so you can use twice the funds on any legal sports betting site edge currently offers up to two twenty five hundred dollars in advances up to twenty five hundred dollars you can add to your bankroll my edge boost double down play of the day is hang tight you'll get that one later on in the show go to sports gambling podcast.com slash edge to sign up today that's sports gambling podcast.com slash edge must be 21 years or older to use only valid in legal gambling states problem gambling call 1-800 gambler it is, of course, the crown jewel of the Indianapolis, of the IndyCar, rather. And it's funny because it's IndyCar. It's Indianapolis 500. I guess it makes sense that that's the crown jewel of their racing calendar. It is 200 laps around this two and a half mile paved track for, you guessed it, 500 miles in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Kissing bricks all the way around. Drinking milk afterwards is customary on this one as well. Uh, again, like Cody said, there's pomp and circumstance that surrounds most F1 races, but this is about the most pompiest and circumstantiest of races that you're going to get on the IndyCar circuit. Absolutely. Speaking of milk, um, they did a poll of the drivers in this race. 28 drivers selected whole milk, three selected 2%, two drivers selected skim milk in this year's Indy 500 milk preference poll. Presented by the Indiana Dairy Farmers. <laughs> what are you, Cody? Where, where I am you a strawberry that? milk guy. I'm really sad <laughs> that nobody picks strawberry. I think that's the best option. I would bring strawberry milk to dump on myself, but uh, I don't think I'll be winning an IndyCar 500 anytime soon, unfortunately. I don't know if that's even an option for the drink. It would be an option if I was racing. I would bring my own strawberry milk or <laughs> strawberry <laughs> syrup to mix in the milk. I don't care. We're making a strawberry milk. White milk is just, you know. Uh, uh, I'm a 2% guy, so I... I, I <laughs> we're, we're an almond milk family because my daughter has, you know, issues with regular milk, so I don't know. But 
I would go with strawberry anyways. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. Well, I don't know what the pick of the uh, the winner uh, will be this year, or even if the people hey, that pick skim milk. Books, books are sleeping. We need odds on uh, what kind of milk the winner will use. Obviously, I think that whole milk would be at a very high price, being the 28 of the 33 picked that. But uh, you never know. You could uh, sneak a skim in there. <laughs> I don't know why you would. Maybe uh, somebody shows up with strawberry milk. You never know. You know, Give what, me maybe, strawberry is a long shot. <laughs> maybe we put our own uh, our own odds out there on on milk and see how how I'll we all fare strawberry on at a hundred to one, please. A hundred to wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's do this. Let's just start setting up some of our bets. Let's uh, start figuring out who to bet on in the Indianapolis five hundred. Like we said, it is two hundred laps. It is five hundred miles. Uh, and it will be a riveting race nonetheless. Although Jimmy Johnson, not in this race this year. So I'm definitely Rod's, satisfied. Rod's got his Jimmy Johnson shirt on. Unfortunately, he'll be racing the Coke 600 though. Yes, he will. Of course, make sure you listen to other episodes of the NASCAR gaming podcast. We'll cover that as well. Um, but my first pick is going to be Takuma Sato over Renus VK minus 110. This one's over on Caesars. Um, this is the, the old dog paired up against the young kid, right? Sato's 46 years old. VK, just 22 years old. Um, VK has got three Indy 500 starts, a 33rd place, a nice eighth place run in 21, and then 20th last year. So a little bit of inconsistency, not a bunch of great finishes. Again, it's a small sample size, only three starts. But Takuma Sato has 14 starts. He's won this race twice in 2017 and 2020. In those three races that VK has been, Sato has beat him two of the three races. Um, and uh, for Sato this year, he's actually only racing. He signed an oval only deal with Chip Ganassi Racing. Um, so he is focusing only on the oval races. So he raced to Texas. He did get caught up in a wreck there. But um, I feel like that gives him an advantage too, where um, obviously VK has, has been racing on the road courses and focusing on the entire season. Sato is just focused on the ovals most specifically i'm sure focused on the indy 500 which he has experience in um before they've both been fast obviously vk uh is starting second in this race um but sato has been atop the practice boards a lot um he was third place in both practices seven and eight here most recently um and he was the fastest on the board in practices three and five so i like sato i like his experience here um and vk again and just uh, to go back and, and set up, I guess, more of what I'm looking at, I'm almost exclusively only looking at Indy 500 stats. We talk about this in NASCAR. We talk about this in F1. And even, uh, you know, when I'm doing my IndyCar handicapping on a week-to-week -week basis, which you can follow me on Twitter at Husker underscore Zeeb and find my picks on a weekly basis over there. But um, it to, you, track to track, it, it varies, right? You look at comparable tracks. You look at how things are trending for the season. When it comes to looking at the Indy 500, I am only looking pretty for the most part, and it, you'll really get into that example in one of my next bets. Um, I'm almost only looking at previous Indy 500 races because it's so different from everything else on the IndyCar schedule and how they perform under all that pressure in the biggest race um, and, and on a track that's not really like any of the other tracks. There's some other ovals, of course, but this one is almost it's more oval, I guess, than the other ovals. It's more rectangle almost, of course. Um, and so I just wanted to, to mention that that's kind of how I'm looking at almost all of, uh, if not all actually, of my things are, are very, very heavily based on what has gone on in the past in this specific race. I love it. Uh, all right. Well, my first bet is going to be a parlay because why not? Uh, Caesars, are, I opened up the book. And it instantly sent me right to this. And I absolutely love this bet because it mixes all three series. I figure if we're going to cross over, let's freaking cross this, over. This is doing it right. I like let's, it. Let's get nuts, shall we? Uh, all right. So I have got on the docket for this, this Caesars parlay. And it comes in at plus 609, by the way. So this is, uh, this is the odds for it. You get Sergio Perez to finish on the podium. You get Marcus Erickson as a top five car, and you get Denny Hamlin as a top five car. So Sergio Perez, obviously an F1 driver, will be in Monaco this year, won Monaco last year. And listen to the F1 Gambling Podcast. This is why I did this. Get this? Because now I'm going to tell you, if you want more on Sergio Perez and, and a deeper dive into it, 
listen to our Monaco episode when it comes out because that's all we're going to talk about. It's Red Bull or nothing. Like these guys, him and his teammate, Max Verstappen, just own. They've won every race, every other race, basically this season. It's no other team has won a race this year but Red Bull. And which means no other team has had as many podium finishes as Red Bull. And all you're doing is putting uh, Perez on the podium. That's all you, you don't even need him to win this race to cash this part of the ticket. And Sergio Perez is going to be a top three car by the end of the day, barring any craziness, barring any, I mean, obviously you could say that about racing in general at all, but we got to put Sergio Perez at least in the top three. I mean, if not the top two, if not at the top of the podium, that's, that's just how it's going to have to be. Yeah. And he's so, the, the king of street courses too, which this mm-hmm. is, this track plays perfectly into that for him. Yeah, exactly. Which is why this is a strong first part. In fact, it'll be the first thing you watch. <laughs> in fact, yeah. it'll be Sergio Perez uh, in the in the Monaco Grand Prix to start the morning off. Well, then you move to Marcus Erickson as a top five car. His Indy results here, his his Indianapolis 500 results uh, have actually not been all that bad, to be honest with you. Um, he actually has got uh, I'm looking at uh, where is he at? Uh, I had it up. Uh, he won last year's. He did one. La- yeah, he That's won a last good year. start. <laughs> That's a very good start. In fact, uh, but he's, <laughs> this season, this season, too, he's actually been good. He won to start off with St. Petersburg. He had an eighth place at Fort Worth, a third place at Long Beach, 10th place at Birmingham. Um, so, again, Marcus Erickson. Yeah, he won this race last year, which definitely uh, does not uh, is not a bad thing. And now again, all you're doing, all you want him to do is be a top five driver this year. Uh, he is starting 10th, which means he's got a little bit of work to do. Uh, but you look back at his last fit. I mean, last year was about his best finish. He he won here uh, the year before 11th, 32nd, 23rd in his starts here at Indy. But I mean, if he's, you can go from 11th, aggressively yeah. gotten better at ovals as well. Like, I don't I don't think he had any oval experience when he came to IndyCar um, and has put major focus on the ovals. Obviously, that has paid off by winning the Indy 500 last year. Yeah. So again, and then he, like I said, he won it. So that's a good feather in his cap. But again, he's been running solid all year long. And all you want him to do is finish in fifth. He's in a Chip Ganassi uh, car, which is is also good as well. Uh, so yeah, we talked about their their prowess on the ovals. All right. And then the final leg of this is Denny Hamlin as a top five car. Uh, if you listen to the NASCAR Gambling Podcast, which most of you guys on this feed already do, you know about Denny Hamlin. You know he's one of the favorites to win this Coke 600. We talked about how good uh, the Gibbs cars are probably going to end up being. Toyota's basically owned this track for a while and shared it a little bit with Hendrick. But, uh, I mean, Denny's going to be a favorite to win. He is a favorite to win uh, this race, which means, of course, if all you need him to do is finish inside the top five, then you're golden for Denny Hamlin. And that's a that's I feel like that's a slam dunk right there. All three of these, they just feel like such great, great things to put together and start your card off right at a plus uh, a six to one. Yeah. These are very, uh, all very, very achievable. It's not, you don't have two like pretty good ones. And then one that's like, uh, it's a little bit of a stretch. Sometimes that's how they get you on these ones. It seems like, but these are all very achievable. And and these guys should all, uh, be within this range. If you are just an Indy car fan that stumbled across this, welcome to the sports gambling podcast network. This is the uh, hashtag DGen stuff that you get when you come here. So, hope you like it. It is. It is. Uh, all right. Speaking of which, we've got to step away for a quick break to pay the bills and come back with even more picks for the Indianapolis 500. Well, let's tell you about Shady Rays. Shady Rays is teaming up with SGPN for Shady May. Not only do you get an amazing 50% offer, but you have a chance to win $500. Shady Rays have you covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and so much more. Shady Rays of durable frames and extremely clear optics for all of your outdoor adventures. Plus, if you lose or break a pair, even day one, second one, minute, it doesn't matter when they do it. They told us that they're going to send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. And if you don't love them, exchange them for a brand new pair or return them for free within 30 days. Always no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. That team has always got your back. For our international listeners, don't worry. Shady Rays has got you covered as well with shipping to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. Go to ShadyRays.com right now. Use the code SGPN for 50% off of two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. And remember, May's almost over, so make sure to take that receipt to SportsGamblingPodcast.com 
slash Shady for your chance to win the $500 Shady May contest. All right, let's continue filling out this card for the Indianapolis 500. Cody, what do you got next? Next up for me, I am going to take, and uh, don't turn this off until you listen to my explanation if you're an IndyCar fanatic. I'm going to take uh, Santonio Ferrucci over Scott McLaughlin plus 105. If you look back at the five races this season, I believe we're five races in, uh, Scott McLaughlin has actually won this head-to-head every single time. But... When it comes to the Indy 500, it's been a struggle so far for Scotty Mack. It's been a struggle for Team Penske over the past few years, basically since Roger Penske bought Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's been pretty rough going. Seems like something always goes wrong for these Penske boys. Um, And until we see that change, I don't know why we would think it's going to go any differently. But um, so Scotty Mack has got two starts here. In the Daytona 500, a 29th and a 20th place. Neither of those are very impressive. When it comes to Santonio Ferrucci, four starts at this in the Indianapolis 500. Never finished worse than 10th, Rod. Um, he's got a 7th place, a 4th place, a 6th place, and a 10th place finish. That is consistency. That's what I'm looking for here. Um, so again, if four races, never worse than 10th. Scotty Max only got two, smaller sample size, but 29th and 20th, not super impressive in either of those races. So uh, at first glance, you may look at this and be like, whoa, why are these two guys even paired up together? But when you look a little deeper, you look at what they've done at this track in this specific race. It's been on Ferrucci's side both times that they've been matched up and Ferrucci's four for four on showing good positive results. So give me San Antonio Ferrucci over Scott McLaughlin and you're getting at a plus money at plus 105. So I really like this bet. Uh, and this one's over on Caesars as well. Absolutely love it. Uh, all right. I didn't set out to go full Ganassi, but I guess I'm going full Ganassi. Uh, as Are you my... sure you don't know anything about IndyCar, Rod? I, you know, you would think that I don't, <laughs> but uh, actually that's uh, Arrow McLaren, right? It's not Ganassi this time. Oh. Uh, he was... <laughs> I should look and see what your next thing was. <laughs> he was Ganassi. Yes. Never mind. Uh, he's McLaren. <laughs> Uh, he was Ganassi, which is why I was like, oh, my goodness. Uh, Tony Kanaan as a top five car uh, may not be a very popular pick, but I mean, he has had some top five finishes on this track. Uh, he's, you know, obviously an experienced driver. 21 starts on this track. He's actually led 352 laps uh, of this race, which, you know, if you I, I watched last year's, it's not easy to lead a lap in this series. It's not like NASCAR where a lot of folks run around, uh, run away with it. Um, leading laps is a big deal in IndyCar. So uh, you got to got to tip your cap when they get there. Last season, though, a very promising third place finish after a sixth place start. Um, so he definitely moved up the uh, the drive shaft there. He's made one start uh, in, in uh, the 2022 season uh, where he finished third at Indianapolis. Uh, that was the third place start. So not a not a heavy starter. He doesn't start a lot of races. In fact, like I said, last year was he's the only just, one. Yeah, he's pretty much down to just running the 500s anymore. But yeah, uh, they roll him out for the yeah. 500, sort of, <laughs> sort of fluff him up for him and get him out there. But he did finish third in the in the 500 last year, which you know, again, for a guy that doesn't necessarily drive but one race a year, that's not bad to jump in a car and finish third. He did qualify ninth, like I said, so he's going to roll off somewhere in that third row, which puts him close enough to the front, in my opinion to make a dart toward the front and, uh, and get there. So, and, and we're talking like seconds, uh, 32, uh, two thirty four point four five five eight was his total time. His average speed, two thirty three dot zero six seven. Uh, I know that's like not even a barely a mile an hour slower than, uh, than the guy. I know that's a lot when it comes to being on the track, but you know, I'm telling you right now, I think he has a possibility to find his way into a top five again. And I like the odds of this at plus 200. So you're doubling up anyways on it if he does finish in the in the top five. Yeah, exactly. And Kanaan, obviously, no stranger to IndyCar. 295 starts over 22 seasons. Former champion. Um, 16 wins. 73 podiums in his career. So knows what he's doing. Obviously, he, he stepped back to, to spend more time with his family, but still likes showing up for the big race. And uh, that strategy worked out pretty good for him last season, getting the top three finish. So just asking him to get a top five this year. Definitely not a stretch at all. Uh, next up for me, I'm going to take Scott Dixon for a top three. This is plus 240 over at Barstool. 
Um, Scott Dixon, if you watched last season, absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, led 95 laps of 200 in that race. Um, it, it was just dominating. It, he was killing the field again in the Chip Ganassi Honda. <laughs> um, but he was killing it. Uh, then I think it was with 23, 30 laps to go, something like that. The, the speeding penalty on pit road. Of course that cost him a good finish on the day, but I think that he's going to be back. He's got to win here before. So we know he can get it done back in 2008. I think Dixon is back for revenge. Going to try not to make a big mistake like he did last season. I think he's going to have another fast car. Again, all in on the Honda boat, all in on the Chip Ganassi boat. Give me Scott Dixon for a top three, plus 240 over on Barstool. Yeah, I checked out when Jimmy had his problem, so I didn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> after, <laughs> well, that was pretty late. Jimmy had his problem. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man. Eh. I mean, that was, yeah, that was really late in the race. But even still, like, the only car I was paying attention to was that Carvana car out there uh, with Jimmy Johnson. But. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that name always pops up, uh, Mr. Dixon. So I like that as well. Uh, all right. Well, for those of you who have just tuned in for this Indianapolis 500 episode, you need to go back and listen to more NASCAR Gambling Podcast episodes. For those of you who are in the NASCAR family already that listen to this, I'm sorry. I'm doing it again. I'm going back to the winning car number. Uh, hey, uh, not, not broke. Don't fix it, right? This, this, yeah. is, this is Rod's area of expertise is the, the number bets. He's great at these. It definitely is my my strong flu. Uh, although the winning car number for this one is minus, uh, or I'm sorry, under nine and a half is what I'm taking at minus 110. Um, this gives you a very powerful, uh, it gives you uh, some some good winners out here. It gives you Pat Award. It gives you Scott Dixon. Uh, it gives you, um, it doesn't give you Tony Kanaan. It gives you Marcus Erickson. Uh, it gives you Scott McLaughlin. Uh, it gives you Joseph Newgarden. Uh, which, you know, as another popular name, that's a pretty loaded list under nine and a half. Honestly, uh, it doesn't give you the uh, Elio Castronovas four time yeah. Indy 500 winner. We know he can still get it done. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, it gives you it gives you a couple of heavy hitters and Pat Award and Scott Dixon as well, uh, which I like. So, again, you know, this is one of the ones it's the least juiced of them all at minus 110. So I, I like the potential of it, especially the fact that uh, two of them are starting inside the uh, the first couple of rows. Three of them, rather, even. Uh, three cars underneath nine and a half are starting inside the front row. So I figure that gives you a good shot if one of them holds on uh, to cash this bet. Well, if you listen to any of the other shows, I don't argue with Rod ever on these bets. So uh, I'll go with you. There is, there is some really good choices under there. Getting a good price at minus 110. Next up for me, I got a couple of top fives here. I'm going to take Pato Award for a top five. Um, he has got five starts this season. So this one I am I am looking a little bit at how his season's going. Five starts. He's finished second place three different times. He's got a fourth place finish. One rough day at Barber where he finished 17th. But he is off to a hell of a season. And three starts in the Indianapolis 500. He has never finished worse than sixth. In fact, he's actually gotten progressively better. Sixth place in his first start. Fourth place in his second start. Second place last season. There's only one more way to go up, Rod, so I uh, better watch out for Pato. But all you need him to do here is get in the top five over on Barstool, um, and it's plus 100. So I really like the odds you're getting on that. And then got to throw in the heart pick, the fan favorite, of course, Connor Daly, top five, plus 550 over on Barstool. Obviously, he is a Indian. If you don't know, I guess it's, maybe it's not obvious, but Indianapolis kid, born and raised there. His stepfather, I believe it is, is actually the president of the track. Um, it's a little fun fact for you there, but when he takes the lead at the Indianapolis 500, which he's done multiple times, the entire crowd gets on their feet and you can hear the, the noise of the crowd over the roar of the engines. Um, so he's very, very popular there. Obviously the home kid, um, he's got a podcast over on Dale Jr.'s Dirty Mo Media, Speed Street. That's a great show. Him and uh, comedian Joey Molinero, they do a great job over there. Love to listen to that. And not only do you have all of the warm, heartfelt stuff I just said, he's actually done fairly decently here. Um, he's led in multiple 500s, like I said. Um, he finished sixth place in this race last season. That's only one spot out of the top five, of course. A 13th place in 2021. He had a 10th place finish in 2019 as well. Um, so, again, he's a little bit longer odds for a reason. It's plus 550. But that's a pretty good price for a guy who finished sixth place last season. Just one spot out of there. We know he can get it done. 
Maybe this turns into a fuel mileage race. Maybe he gambles a little bit. Um, I could see that happening from that type of team. So give me Connor Daly, top five plus 550, and Pato Award, top five at plus 100. Both of those are over on Barstool as well. Good stuff. Uh, all right, I will turn my attention to one of my other favorite bets, and that's the Quinella. Uh, why? Because either one of these guys can win and the other finish second, and you are golden. Picking two of uh, the drivers that I like to, to win quite possibly, and that's Alex Palou and then uh, Takuma Sato. Both, both of those in a Quinella, that's at 14 to 1. I mean, these guys uh, obviously both have their own uh, uh, accolades to go with it. Uh, Palou is actually the pole sitter and the, the favorite to win at plus 600. You got to scroll down a little bit for Sato. He's at 12 to 1 to win this race. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm liking both of these guys' opportunities to try to nail down a win. Uh, and Sato is starting in eighth place. Uh, right there in that third row. So I think that's still close enough to be within striking distance of trying to chase down at least a second place uh, finish or a win. And for uh, Sato, you had said something earlier about him. He does have two wins on this track. Uh, so it's it's not you know out of the realm of possibility for him to steal at least a win or he finishes second and I'm okay with that. Uh, but for, for uh, Paolo, his season's been freaking spectacular this year eighth place at st petersburg third at fort worth fifth at long beach beach fifth at birmingham and then he won the indy gp last time out on the track so he's a red hot driver right now i would not put it past him to win this race or at the very least finish second so if i'm gonna put two of those guys together at 14 to 1 i really do like the look at this this is an outstanding pairing love both these guys polo the favorite for the race do you need much more explanation than that? Um, and I've got some more on Sato here in a few. So, uh, yeah, I like it. Beautiful. All right. What you got next? Uh, do we need any last breaks? Are we good? We're good. No, to we're go? good. Let's oh, just go we're right good to go. It. Look at that. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Well, my winning picks then. Um, I've got two guys circled. Wrote these guys both up in my article. Going to stick with both of them. Both guys I've already talked about already. Give me Scott Dixon plus 800 over on FanDuel. Again dominated this race last season, led 95 of the 200 laps. I think he can get it done. He's won before in 2008. Been a little while, but better late than never to get that second one. I think Dixon could do it. And also, just mentioned him, Takuma Sato, plus 1,200. Again, he's focused only on these oval tracks, um, and he's been super, super fast in practice. He's looked good out there. He's pushing the limits. There's a couple times he's gotten real close to the wall, and it's somehow not wrecked it. But uh, hopefully he doesn't quite do that much in the race. But I really like Sato this week. And at 12-1 to 1 over on DraftKings, I think that these are two really solid bets. Love it. Okay, for me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and give you Alex Palou for the win. Uh, I know he's the favorite. I get it. You're probably like, all oh, right, you just picked the favorite because you know nothing about Indianapolis 500. Uh, you're probably right. but Look, it's not without its merit. Uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for uh, Mr. Palou, he has actually led 47 laps last season, 35 laps the, the season before. We talked about how difficult it is to lead laps on this track. I mean, listen, the guy, the guy knows how to be in front now. Unfortunately, he only finished second in 2021 and ninth in uh, 2022. But... Again, he's starting on the pole. Dude was flying. He we said he was the fastest. He set a record, right? So we know he's got a fast, fast car this week. And when you're starting on the pole, hopefully you jump out to the front. Now you're probably going to lose the lead a couple of times, but it's on you to grab that lead back again and, and manage to, uh, to find your way actually to the front and win uh, this race. And again, he does not have an Indianapolis 500 win. I'm sure he'd like to. He won on this track, uh, not this track, but he won in Indianapolis the last time they were out in the Grand Prix. Uh, and so maybe that carries over. Maybe he's got good momentum going. Like I said, at plus 600, I know he's a favorite, but six to one still not bad for a favorite to win, uh, especially when we're talking like either F1 or NASCAR, where sometimes it's plus three, plus four, or in some cases, plus one, minus two, <laughs> depending on if some accidents happen. But uh, yeah, so I, I like the favorite to win this race this week. Yes, I like it. I am going to give out one more winner because I cannot leave this on the board. Elio Castronovez is 55 to one, Rod. 
He has won four Indy 500s, including just two seasons ago. He's a longer shot for a reason. He's getting up there in age and in his equipment. But 55 to 1, and he's done it four times. And he just did it two years ago. Can't leave that off the board. I do want to point something out. We gave out four different winners, and we gave out four different Hondas, Rod. Honda has won here three times in a row, five of the last seven. I do have a Honda bet, bonus bet as well, that's in my article. you got to go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com to see that, or my Twitter, at Husker underscore Z, if you can find the link to the article over there to get the bonus Honda bet. But three in a row, five of the last seven, I, I think there's a pretty good reason that all four of the winners we gave out are Hondas. Um, and some heavy on the Chip Ganassi, of course, because they are uh, pretty damn good. <laughs> they are the Red Bull of IndyCar. If maybe you not. Are. Maybe I don't know if I go that far, but. <laughs> All right, fine. Penske they're, is more of that team, just not at Indy lately. <laughs> they're the Red Bull light, I suppose. But yeah. and, and just to comment on Penske, too, it's been a struggle for them lately. They have won the Indy 500 18 times. That's a lot of fucking Indy 500s. Like, it's amazing. So I wouldn't be completely shocked, but. Been a rough go at Indy for him lately, and I just cannot get off this Honda train. So Honda and Chip Ganassi for me this weekend. I love it. All right, well, get out your pen and paper. Uh, this is the part of the show where we go over our bets for you because uh, we have been asked before to, to summarize what we picked so that way you have a better opportunity to go to the card and fill it out. Uh, we started out with Cody giving you Sato over VK at minus 110 in his head-to-head. I gave you. Sergio Perez from the Formula One circuit to have a top five or a top three finish, rather a podium finish. Uh, Marcus Erickson to have a top five finish and Denny Hamlin from NASCAR to have a top five finish. Piled all those together on Caesars. It comes out to 609 uh, plus 609. So have fun with that parlay. And then Cody gave you uh, for Cucci over McLaughlin uh, at plus 105. I gave you Tony Kanaan as a top five car at plus 200. Cody gave you Scott Dixon as a top three car at plus 240. And then I gave you the winning car number under nine and a half at minus 110. And then Cody gave you a Pato Award as a top five at plus 100. And Connor Daly as a top five at plus 550. I gave you the Alex Pelo and uh, Takuma Sato Quinella at 14 to one. And then Cody suggested Scott Dixon at eight to one, Sato at 12 to one, and Castronovis at 55 to one. Where I said, go ahead, bet the favorite on this one, Pelot, at plus 600. Cody, we are about to get racing for the Indy 500. I cannot believe it. I love that they gave us the opportunity to do this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really do. Yes. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to do our first ever episode of the IndyCar Gambling Podcast. <laughs> Maybe there will be more down the road. Who knows? But a couple of things before we go. We are doing a special uh, contest with uh some friends over at the quick pit pod um it's good they're calling it the memorial day triple podcast challenge uh so you'll go on there you make picks you pick three guys from the f1 race in the morning three guys from the indy 500 three guys from the coca-cola 600 and nascar that evening um you're basically just trying to predict the top three finishers They'll, you'll score points based on where they finish in the race not based on how the series handles it but they have all the rules over there um, so fun little thing there. You can go to our Twitter at NASCAR gambling. We have that, uh, over there so you can click on the link and get entered. Um, I believe he's going to give out die cast, maybe some other things. And there is a $50, uh, gift card to these, uh, SGPN merch store on the line. F1 gambling podcast, NASCAR gambling podcast gear over there. No indie gambling po podcast yet, but, uh, maybe in the near future here. So definitely check that out. Um, and then we have a very busy rest of the week. The NASCAR Cup Series uh, pick show is already out for the Coca-Cola 600. Go back and listen to that. We'll have Xfinity and Truck Series coming up later this week. A DFS show as well. And over on the F1 Gambling Podcast, we will have the Monaco Grand Prix episode. Also, I'm going to be on the uh, NASCAR Betting Preview Podcast Xfinity Series show with Mike Bachman. Uh, going to be, that's uh, been a recently started. They just started that. I think he's two or three episodes in, but great guy doing really good work over there. I've really enjoyed that. So 
happy to be joining him. And I'm going to be on Dale Center for the Garage Guys um, as the F1 guy this week. So, whew, that was a mouthful. That's a lot of stuff. I got plenty of stuff to keep you busy this week. So, check it all out, please. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. follow me on Twitter at Husker underscore Zeb, and you'll find all of that loads of work over there. And I'm done talking now. <laughs> Dude, Cody, just ripping it oh. up this week. You want to talk about busy? You are a busy man. Uh, yes, I, I, on top of what we got going on for this, what Cody laid out, I will be on the back road this week to break down the Coke 600. Uh-oh, Cody grabbing his uh, his uh, F1 car over there. If you're not watching this on YouTube, by the way, uh, make sure you get over my there. My Miller Lite Indy car right here. I that forgot is... to bring it over before the show, but if you're watching on YouTube, yeah. go check out the NASCAR Gambling Podcast YouTube. I guess I should put it in front of the camera. <laughs> pretty pretty sweet little old Miller Lite uh, IndyCar blow up. Uh, I love it. Uh, uh, yes, follow me on Twitter at RJ Via Gomez. Link in the bio to everything I got going on, whether it's here, of course, in between media. Uh, I'll be on Thursday night to break down the Coke 600 and uh, have a good time with uh, Elliot and uh, and our boys. So, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun, Seth and Elliot. <clears throat> All right. We'll release you from your grip. Thanks for joining us, by the way. This was yeah, a fun thank episode. You. Right down. Hopefully, if you want more. Petition our bosses to give you more of the IndyCar stuff, uh, and maybe they'll listen, and maybe they'll give us a full-time show with this. So, All right. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, you stick around for the rest of the series in NASCAR, Xfinity Trucks, DFS coming up as well. Uh, F1 Gambling Podcast is up. Coke 600 will be up. Take it easy, folks. Until next time, let's go racing and let it ride.